Good morning, everyone. Hello, and welcome to What's New Wednesday at Kimber Bell. I'm Kim. It's good to see you. See so many familiar names, faces <laughs> out there on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, good morning, Yvette from West Chicago, Illinois. Good morning, Donna from Connecticut and Jill from Utah. Hi, Chris from Northern California and Lisa, also from Northern California. Maybe you two are friends. Who knows, right? Um, hi, Lila from Southern California. Let's see. Who else do we have? Patty from Oregon. Yep, Patty from Oregon and Bobby from North Carolina. Good morning, Tracy from San Diego and Dee from New Hampshire. Hi, Janice and Chris Spencer. Hello, Autumn from Kansas. Deb from Washington. Kathy from, and where did you go, Kathy? You just flew on by. There we go, San Antonio, Texas. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me this lovely fall morning. I hope it is where you are too. Again, as I said last week, our thoughts and hearts and prayers go out to our Floridian friends, anyone that was in the path of um, Hurricane Ian. I hope you are doing well, as well as could be right now, right? Um, thinking of you for sure. All right. So yes, my friend Judy is also from Florida. Good to see you, Judy as always. All right. So what is new at Kimberbell this week? Well, we've got a few new things that I'm excited to tell you about. And another way that I figured out how to use the designs from Sweetest Pie. <laughs> I hope you're not tired of pie. Who's ever tired of pie? But I've come up with another way. I can't wait to share you, with you how quick and easy this project is using designs from our Sweetest Pie Bench Pillow. So um, <clears throat> there you have it. Let's go ahead and start with a little bit of sew and tell, shall we? <laughs> All right, let's take a look. You guys have been busy, especially with Halloween projects. Probably goes without saying, tis the season, right, for Halloween right now. And so lots of Halloween projects are being posted. That's been a whole lot of fun to see. A lot of fall projects, a little bit of Christmas going on. Um, so we're going to share a, a little bit of all of it, right? This first one actually is, it looks like it's a panel. It comes from Dorothy. She says, took the plunge and quilted this with clear blue tiles and measure 60 by 60. So I was a bit worried, but wasn't hard at all. Thank you, Dorothy, for sharing that. I'm glad it was not difficult and it truly isn't. Let's take a, a closer look at that. Look how great that background swirl design looks. I mean, it looks like she took that to a long armor and yet she did that on her own with the use of clear blue tiles. And panels are a great way to use clear blue tiles. A lot of people are using panels for them. Well, all kinds of projects, but it is fun to see that anything can be used with clear blue tiles. Let's take a look at some Halloween decorating going on. Lots of you are using some Kimberbell projects to decorate for Halloween, including Kara. She says Kimberbell makes decorating fun. Boy, Kara, that, that made me so happy to see, but let's take a closer look at that mantle scarf, shall we? Wow, look at that. What a great, unique, creative way to use um, the Twilight Boulevard bench pillow. Isn't that awesome? So instead of making a bench pillow, she made the mantle scarf. And then in addition, she used the cat and moon design that comes from our Halloween Boo bench pillow. I recognize that one. And then I also recognize that she used the chenille letters and banners, which is so cool because then she was able to spell out spooky. Oh my gosh. It's so cute, isn't it? Don't you love it? That uh, chenille banners um, actually can now be purchased in the vault at Kimberbell. So check that out. It's an oldie, but a goodie. So therefore it's in the vault and um, it looks fantastic. All put together as part of that uh, mantle scarf. What a brilliant idea. Okay, she also took, look, look at this, look at this. She also took designs I could name 
all of them, um, except for the big broom. That was totally her there. What a great idea. But I'm seeing things from, um, you know, um, oh my gosh, now I'm on the spot. Broomhilda's Bakery. Um, oh, the possibilities for Halloween. Um, the Boo Bench Pillow. The, let's see, there was something else I noticed. Well, anyway, they're all Kimberbell designs. And how fun was that to see it in that row by row quilt? Awesome, awesome idea. Way to go. And I think one of my favorite designs um, from, from Broomhilda's Bakery is that row of apothecary jars that you're seeing there. Um, oh my gosh, there's a frog in one, there's eyeballs in another, there's candy corn in another. Check that out, Broomhilda's Bakery. Such cute designs in that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that, Kara. Really, really appreciate it. All right, more decorating going on. Sherry says that she finally finished her candy corn quilt shop. Um, she says it's far from perfect, but she's okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. It looks perfect in your home. I love that. Um, she says a big thanks to my hubby who made the bench and the display shelf. He is amazing. Yep, he sure is. Thank you, hubby of Sherry. Look how cute that is. And I thought I found another picture, but I, maybe I didn't upload it. It it has a more up close of what the bench has on it. And that includes the home is where the haunt is pillow. And I think some of our um, bench buddies for Halloween, just the whole look. And display looks fantastic. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing that. Oh, I love this one here from, looks like Mabel. She says, I modified the flyaway bats. Let me just check on my phone here to make sure I got the right person. It doesn't show up on my screen. That's why I'm having a hard time. Um, okay, yes. No, that's not it. Anyway, oh, here we go. I did get it right, Mabel, thank you. Mabel, she says she modified the flyaway bat pillow to make a 20 by 20. So what Mabel's talking about is that she got this design for the bats. Um, there's a lace bat, there's a leather bat, there's a polka dot glitter bat. And she did that from um, the home is, mm, home is where the haunt is, Kimberbell event. But she took it one step further and she made a 20 by 20 pillow with it. And then she used clear blue tiles to quilt the background with the swirls. She used the pumpkin and candy corn swirl design. Mm, that looks so good, Mabel. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Who do we have next? Looks like Margo. She says it's the pumpkin patch. <laughs> How to make so many more after attending Home Sweet Haunted Home. See how cute these designs are in that event? Oh my goodness, find a shop that's doing it. It's not too late. She says her family and friends demanded that they have their own pumpkins and you can do those quilted pumpkins as part of the Home Sweet Haunted Home event. So awesome. Thank you for sharing that one. All right. This one comes from Sue. She says, I just love how my Twilight Boulevard turned out. That was fun to make. Thank you, Kimberbell. Thank you for posting that, Sue. Um, I love the purple borders. It just makes it pop. And I love how you used it as a wall hanging. It's something we often talk about here at Kimberbell is using those bench pillows in other ways. You used it as, as a wall hanging and it looks perfect in your display. See all the Halloween decorating going on? This is so cool. Next, it looks like Patricia. She says, time to decorate without Kimberbell. My house would be very blah. Well, I don't know about that, Patricia, but thank you for decorating with Kimberbell. This was fun to see. Let's take a closer look at her Halloween decorations. There she's got the table topper uh, from Kimberbell Cuties Volume 1. She has the candy corn uh, quilt shop, which is there in the background, which is like a sewing themed version of a Halloween scene. Of course, can't go wrong with Twilight Boulevard. She's got the bench buddies. Uh, and then to round it all out, she used the design from Home is Where the Haunt is event. You see a theme going on here. And then she used the digital dealer exclusives design for the October 31st pillow. And they just coordinate so perfectly together. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, another Halloween scene. But this one comes from Lynn. 
Lynn, she says, totally loved making the Twilight Boulevard. Um, let's see. She says she's from Australia. And her last trip to America before the world closed down, she spent Halloween in New Orleans. So this bench pillow reminds her of her trip. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, welcome from Australia. That is awesome. Um, and then I, I love that it, it provides a great memory for you. Let's take a closer look at those lights. Ah, isn't that just the most fun dimensional element ever on a pillow? Wow. The Twilight Boulevard was our first design that we ever used um, the fairy lights in. And it's, it's a good one. It's pretty fun. Look at all those little details. you got that chandelier hanging from the tree. And if you take a real close look at that little bench that's underneath the tree, well, that is the Halloween Boo Bench Pillow, just miniaturized. Uh, it's a panel that came in the embellishment kit. Um, so, so cute. It's fun to see some nods to past Kimberbell projects, including the one that's hanging from the tree. That is a little miniature replica of um, Broomhilda's Bakery. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our Australian friend for sharing those pictures. Let's talk about Christmas, shall we? Um, we've got... Uh, da, 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 da. Linda, I think. Linda, yes. Yeah, she says, I'm done whisking. <laughs> she said, this is We Whisk You a Merry Christmas. If anyone is new to Kimberbell and haven't seen this one before, she says, this was a fun quilt to make. And I used some of the background quilting from Sweet as Pie and Cup of Cheer. See, she gets it. She sees that there are possibilities beyond just the specific projects for that background quilting. Um, she used the Gingerbread Man Christmas 3 for the border. Thank you for sharing that info so we can all, you know, find it. And she says, next are the Christmas presents. Oh my gosh, I love it. I absolutely love it, Linda. This one in particular um, happens to be one of our best-selling Christmas um, projects we've ever done. That and Cup of Chair probably and Candy Cane Lane. All of those were pretty, pretty up there in popularity. Thank you for sharing. We whisk you a Merry Christmas, which of course has a kitchen theme to it, which is fun and gingerbread, which can't go wrong, right? And then finally, oh, this one just made me smile. Let's see, where did it go? Well, not finally. We've got a few more. Let's see. Judy says, my two versions of the Whimsy Winter Bench Pillow. She says, my 102-year-old. Did you read that? 102-year-old, you go. Um, Mother-in-law is a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Oh, that just made me so happy. She loves penguins. I made this so it could be hung like a banner in her room. Oh my gosh, that just like touched my heart. I love that uh, at 102 years old, she's loving on the Pittsburgh Penguins hockey team. So fun to see this done up. And I love that you show the two different versions because it takes on two totally different looks, doesn't it? Thank you so much for sharing that and best wishes to your mother-in-law as well. Very, very awesome. Okay, um, looks like... Let's see. Oh, this one just, here we go. Oh yeah, this one just made me smile. <laughs> just made me laugh. I So I had to share it. Oh, there I see myself there in the screen. She went camping. Where did you go here? Um, oh, let's see. I always want to call you by name and it's not showing up. Anyway, um, she said, you can see it there. I think it might have been Mabel. She says, I'm at camp. It's cold, 42 degrees and raining. So she decided to bring her sweetest pie fabric to get it all cut out. She says, it was a great time to catch up on What's New Wednesday. So mwah, thank you for watching What's New Wednesday. That's awesome. But this is what really cracked me up. She says, my husband thinks I may need an intervention. I think he needs the therapy for making me come to camp. <laughs> Okay, that that really just made my day. That that was too funny to read. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, Nicole. Sorry, it wasn't Mabel. It was Nicole. Um, thank you for sharing that, Nicole. <laughs> you keep on camping, and while you're doing it, bring a Kimberbell project along the way, right? <laughs> and then a few of you have been working on your sweetest pie pillows, um, or or designs themselves. Let's see, this one comes from, 
Marty. Marty says, sweet as pie is so fun. Once you start, you can't stop. Oh, I love that. I love seeing those blocks getting done. And then finally, here we go. Diane, Diane, where are you? Right here. She said, loved baking with Kim and Jenny. So I had to have some real blueberry pie. Yum. Both pies are delicious. Can't wait to fire up my oven again to create even more tasty goodness. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Diane, for sharing that. I love that you put the real blueberry pie with the blueberry pie stitch out. What a fun idea, right? Put them all together. Just life is good, right? With that blueberry pie. If you missed it last Friday, <laughs> Jenny and I and Andrew part of the time um, joined you for a so long. How many of you guys watched that? <laughs> this was in my kitchen and they came on over and I got to stitch on the embroidery machine the cherry pie and I made sure that I didn't do anything beforehand um, to to uh, learn this because I wanted to learn right along with you on how our embroiders, our digitizer put this all together. Um, so I stitched the cherry pie while Jenny made an actual real pie, cherry pie, which was amazing. And then Andrew came in just in the nick of time, like he does, right? Um, to taste test the pies. I actually took some funny screenshots here from the video because it just made me laugh all over again. Um, Andrew is taste testing the pies. He's eating his whipped cream. And we may or may not have gotten into a whipped cream mm, power struggle, maybe? <laughs> If any of you watch that, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about, but talk about a whole lot of laughs. So it's not too late to watch that. You can find it on our YouTube page or our Facebook page um, and or Instagram. Actually, it was shown on Instagram as well. And I showed you uh, how to make the pie, like I said, on the embroidery machine, gave you some tips and techniques uh, for combining your background quilting with the design itself. We weaved the pie, all kinds of things. And then um, Jenny did her actual pie. Um, and then Andrew came and taste tested it all. So anyway, that was a fun Friday. Please join us. It's not, again, it's not too late um, to check that out. Um, really, really fun. So that was the sweetest pie so long special that happened last Friday. Don't forget that it's not too late to check it out. All right. So what else were we going to talk about today? Oh, some new ideas for sweetest pie. So as you know, um, I, I showed this a couple weeks ago and I think I showed it again last week, but if you are just joining us, I took uh, the pecan pie and put it on a tea towel, and then I took the background quilting designs from Sweetest Pie. This was one of the borders, and I put it on a tea towel to make a gift set. But today, I'm gonna show you one more way um, that I just thought of, like literally two days ago, I woke up out of a deep sleep, <laughs> Does this ever happen to you guys? I woke up and I went, oh my gosh, I've got to find pie tins. Pie, actual pie tins. Because this is what I did. And actually, I haven't even finished making it yet. We're going to finish it together um, today. So let's see. Let me just one thing here we go all right yeah lots of people said yes that was fun janice says i think you all had fun 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 in that kitchen yeah we sure did <laughs> lynn you're right she says best ideas come around 3 a.m isn't it funny how that happens well guess what <laughs> it happened and so what i decided to do is i thought you know what that cherry pie that i made last week um, would look really cute as a pin cushion, a pin cushion. Okay. I thought about making it into a little shelf pillow and I thought about making the whole square that I did into a pin cushion. And then in the morning, when I woke up a few days ago, I went, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What if we got some aluminum pie pants? 
They're the five inch size. I just found them, guys. I just found them on Amazon. I was like, I don't even know one, know anyone who has five inch pie, pie, round pie tins. It's just the foil kind. But I thought, you know what? If it's a five inch tin, it probably would fit this on top. So like I said, I didn't make this yet, put it together. We're going to do it live and hopefully this idea actually works. I, I can't, we can't go wrong, right? We can't go wrong on this. This has got to work, but look what happens. It fits perfectly. Like it was made for this pie tin. So here we go. What I'm thinking is again, I just, I stitched, you guys saw last Friday, I stitched this out. I did the background quilting the whole bit. But then afterwards, I'm like, you know what? I really want to make a pin cushion out of that. And I want to make it with a tin foil pan, five inch pan. So I just cut out the extra quilting. So if you're making this for the first time, don't do your background quilting. Just stitch this onto fabric, right? Okay. So then I've got my glue gun plugged in my trusty glue gun and what i'm thinking is that i'm just going to do about halfway around oh there we go oh see you can, can you see the steam coming from that that is hot 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 all right i'm just gluing it around the rim a, a tad oh you guys it's like ooh, ooh, ooh. it's it's a hot one it fits perfectly which means if that fit perfectly then the pumpkin pie is going to fit perfectly and the blueberry pie is going to fit perfectly and what oh the pecan pie will probably fit perfectly i'll have to try it out okay so um <laughs> what, cindy you're so funny she says i would like to see what goes on in your brain you are so creative so glad to share with us well you're very kind cindy i'm not sure it's always <laughs> You don't, you don't, you don't want to visit that. <laughs> it can be kind of scary, right? Okay, so I'm just gluing only about half of it right now. At first, I thought I would stuff the pin cushion first and then put the pie on top. But I'm thinking instead, and I'm thinking instead, I'm just going to glue halfway. Now I've got a little lip to stuff it. Now. If I had this at my house and I don't, I would probably, um, I would probably put, um, oh my gosh, walnut litter inside. I love using walnut, walnut litter. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You can find it at pet stores actually. Um, but <laughs> walnut litter is going to make it nice and heavy. So I'd probably put some of that in here too, but I don't have it. So I'm just going to use stuffing. I'd probably use a combination, I should say, of walnut litter and stuffing. But now see, now I can just like put this in there. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Oh my gosh, it's turning out guys. I, I, I have a feeling this is going to work. All right. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. So now I'm going to glue the rest of it. I feel pretty good about that stuffing. Maybe a little bit more. It's got to be a nice full pie, rounded full pie, right? All right. You guys, these were super cheap. Um, like I said, it's the five inch size and they're going to work whoop, perfectly with these pies that come from Sweetest Pie. So see, if you've already bought Sweetest Pie, now you have even more reason. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. You have even more reason to make more projects with it. But if you haven't bought Sweetest Pie, it's not too late. And just to make these pin cushions would be so darling. All your friends. Can you like have a slice of cherry pie with a pin on top, right? See what I did there? Pin on top instead of cherry on top. There we go. <gasps> Woo! I'm so excited. Okay. We got to put pins in it. Let's, let's do that. Done. Okay. Would that not be the cutest thing to line up? I Do, do any of you collect pin cushions? I totally... I love collecting pin cushions. It's like my thing. Okay. 
So I click pincushions. Now I have another pincushion in my display. You know what? I don't think you need the walnut litter. It still feels pretty darn heavy. Like it's not going to go anywhere, but you know, you could add a little bit, I guess, for the weight. And they always say walnut litter also helps um, sharpen your pins too, each time you put them in there. So you could. I want a whole lineup of pies. I'm going to now make a pumpkin pie. I, I've already got my cherry pie now, pin cushion. I could have a pumpkin pie pin cushion. I don't know if you saw the description, but I said, learn how to make a pinkin pie. <laughs> Pinkin pie, not pumpkin pie. You got it. Pinkin pie. I'm going to do a pinkin pie with the pumpkin from Sweetest Pie. And then I, I got to do a pecan pie because the pecan pie is so stinking cute, you guys. You know. Look at that. I mean, can you imagine a pin cushion with that on it? Mm, that could be cute. All right. So there you have it. There you have it. Now, what do you think? You want to give it a whirl? You want to try it? <laughs> I'm so excited. It's the simplest of ideas, and I can't believe it. It's just like serendipitous that Kimberbell's 5-inch pie would fit a tin that already exists out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's kind of fun. Kim Yanko, my friend. What did you do? You just said something fun. Okay. Oh, I would make them and display for my kitchen. Yeah. You can even, you don't have to use it as a pin cushion. This would be really cute. Just as Kim said, as a display in your kitchen or like a display on your tiered tray or whatever. Hmm. Okay. There you have it. Easy peasy. Easy as pie. There you go. <laughs> I'm so excited. What do you think? Are you going to make one? Yeah. She's Shelly. She says, what a great a uh, great gift idea for retreat participants and friends. Mm -hmm. Super inexpensive to do. You've got the files probably already. And if you don't, it's still, I mean, it's another way to use those designs, right? <gasps> Ooh, Janice, that's a good idea. She says you could have it as a name place on your Thanksgiving table. That would be cute. I like that idea. Okay. Um, what size are they again? Someone asked. They are five inch. Aluminum foil round pans, five inches. That's that's what it is. Okay, there you have it. I have 50 of them, so I, I gotta get cracking on these pies. <laughs> All my friends out there are getting pie pin cushions. I don't know. We'll see. Um, oh, let's see. This is fun. Marsha says, uh, do pumpkin pie and don't glue the top on, but put autumn candy inside as a candy dish. Mm, I love that idea, Marsha. Great, great idea. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Debbie said, someone said, put some fragrance. Great idea. Yeah, that is a really good idea. You guys, I love... Don't you love like bouncing ideas off of each other? It's so fun. That's what we do, right? Like one idea leads to the next, to the next, to the next. Keep it up. I love hearing your ideas. So there you have it. Another way to use Sweetest Pie. Or yeah, Sweetest Pie. If you don't have it yet, find a shop out there who does. And there's a whole lot of them. And if you don't live near a shop, visit your favorite quilt shop online. They will be happy to send it to you for sure. All right. So that is the sweetest pie. And there's several pies you could choose from for that. All righty. Um, let's see. One other thing that's new. And then some people are going to win some pretty awesome gift certificates to background quilting. So we have a new category of background quilting designs now available at Kimberbell.com. I want to show you what they are, why they're a new category, how you can learn more, and how you can find the very first design that's available in this new category. So uh, let's see. Let me start by sharing my screen, and then I'm going to show you a few examples. What this category is called is the new block-by-block block borders. 
Okay, block by block borders. Now, yes, our borders in the past still available, still work, still, you know, people use them all the time. It's awesome. But it, there's a little difference between block, the new category of block by block borders and what we've always used is just borders that also work with clear blue tiles. Let me help you see the difference, okay? So let me go ahead, I'm gonna um, maybe share my screen here. Oh, where did it go? Hmm. <laughs> For some reason, I am not seeing my share the screen. Hold on just a minute. I want you to see this. Hold on. Well, maybe I'm not going to be able to show it with you, show it to you today. Um, <laughs> if anyone is on from Kimberbell, maybe you can help me out. Usually I have a little button that says share screen. And for some reason, it's not giving me that. And I want to be able to show you what is happening. Um, okay, let me hold on just a minute. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, well, while we're working on that, yeah, gotta, Kim says, gotta love technology. Yeah, it's always there. Oh, my buddy Andrew is on right now. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andrew, how you go. doing? Andrew, 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 Andrew. Andrew. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to, what are we trying to do? We're trying to share your screen. Trying to share, share the Karenbell.com website. Karenbell.com website. Okay, yeah, let's yeah. do that. Let me pull this up for you. So you yeah. see down below where it says present? Yeah, yeah. Or actually, here, I'll just do it for you. Okay, okay. Go. Oh, oh! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you do find it? Are you seeing, are you seeing my, my echoes? echoes? Your echoes? I don't hear any echoes. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's still, still not, not letting me share, share buddy. buddy. <laughs> okay, here we go. I will share. Okay, okay. So, here we go. Sharing. Presents. Okay, let's see. Andrew, Andrew turn, turn off my sound, sound on, on your computer. computer. Okay. Well, hold Maybe, on. That, Maybe that works. One nope, thing nope. at a time. Here we go. Okay, you're muted now. Now we can't hear you. What? What, Kim? What? What? I can't hear you. What? What? Okay, you're back. Hello, hello. Hi, you're back. I don't, I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hello, hello. You're back. People are getting, getting echoes. echoes. I'm not hearing any. It might be on your side. Okay. Okay, okay I'm going to try and share your screen, okay? I'm going to share the the Kimberbell screen, okay? Okay. okay. One sec. Is it, is is it still echoing? I can't even tell. No. And I, and I can't hear Andrew, Andrew so, so, you know, you know there's that. that. <laughs> you know, let's just keep sticking with this, guys. Here we go. Here we go. <gasps> there it is! Okay, okay, make, make it big. big. Now, now I need you to go to, go to products, products at, the top. at the top. It's, it's echoing. echoing. Bear, bear, bear with us for just, just a minute. minute. Go, go to, to background, background quilting. quilting. And then, and then scroll, scroll down. down. Do you see, you see the, the new block, 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 block borders? borders? Oh, 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 oh. Up. Okay, uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Click, Click on, on learn more. more. Okay, okay. Now scroll, scroll down, down to the video, video. Where, it where it says, see what Kim says. says. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we're, then then we're, we're going to play the video, video, but we're only going to play a portion, a portion of, it. of it. So when so I do, when I do this, this, Andrew, stop, stop it. it. Okay. Hey, I already have it uploaded to uh, StreamYard for you. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, we'll do it. I'm going to mute myself, though.
Can you guys hear it? Okay, I think it's choppy. Let's go ahead and go back to me. And let's click out of the video. Guys, but maybe I'll just do it from StreamYard. Let's try that. How's that? Okay. Andrew, way to try and help. <laughs> Everyone give Andrew an applause. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to try a different way of getting this to you. Let me try over here on my side uh, to tell you about the new block by block borders, I think. <laughs> Is it under Kimber Bell? We'll see. Here we go. Hi, I'm Kim from Kimberbell, and I'm excited to share with you a new offering that Kimberbell has for creating background quilting on borders. Introducing Block by Block Borders. While this first sounds a lot like our other styles of border designs, this one differs just a bit because of a design element that is repeated over and over again, many of them being a geometric or a linear design. Because this is different, you will now find this style of borders stitched out onto a light gray fabric on our website, indicating that these borders are only available to quilt with the block by block method and not offered as a clear blue tile design method. Because you use the block by block method for making these geometric designs, you'll also notice that the files are specially digitized to eliminate batting in the seams. You could say that block by block borders are comparable to a traditional long arm border in that they create a continuous repeated pattern. Now, while a clear blue tile border creates a more of an all over design and maximizes the full length of the hoop, a block by block border is digitized with custom lengths to create that continuous repeated pattern. So when you're selecting files to use, always refer to the extracts found on the first page of your instructions in order to find the size that's going to give you the most repeats, but utilizing the hoop size that works best for your machine. If this all sounds a little overwhelming, no worries. Our instructions make it so easy to create a beautiful, professional look. Plus, I'm going to show you right now how quick and easy it is. Let's first take a look at your instructions that accompany your download. As you can see here, just as we do with our other border designs, we still include six different widths to choose from. The first number here indicates the finished width of your fabric, and you can see that the designs are offered in one, two, three, four, five, and six inch widths. The second number to the right indicates the lengths of the most common size hoops. You have choices between a seven inch length, 10 inch length, 12 inch and 14 inch lengths. So in my example here, my hoop is a five by seven size and I want to quilt a three inch finished border. All I need to do is look at these extracts, choose the three by seven inch file name and pull that one up on my machine. Now note that the embroidery field that is stitching is a half an inch wider than the file name size. And that's just to account for the fact that the digitizing eliminates that extra batting in your seams. So although my fabric in this case was cut at three and a half inches wide, I'm still choosing the three inch width for my border because that's gonna be what the finish size of my border width is. On page three of your instructions, you will find a helpful chart for cutting your fabrics and batting, so be sure to refer to that as well. As I mentioned earlier, block by block borders are specially digitized to match stitching continuously from one hooping to the next. Each border file size includes the exact pattern needed to match up with the additional hoopings. Because of this, some files are repeat files, since extending the length of the pattern would mean that the stitching would not match up with the next hooping. Let's take a look at this example. You'll notice that the four x 10 file is a repeat of the four x seven file. Why? 
because if we extend the length of the pattern in the 4x10 file, that would mean that it would not match up exactly with the next hooping. The hoop simply ends too soon before the next repeat. So therefore, in order to get the full repeat, the 4x7 and 4x10 will look identical in this case. But if you look further at, say, the 4x12 file, the pattern is able to create its full repetition. And looking even further, a full repetition can be done again in a 4x14 as well. So my tip here is that if you are using a file that has a repeated size, simply choose the smaller hooping size available to reduce waste of batting and stabilizer. Now, let's get to the fun part, shall we? <laughs> You've cut your fabric, and by the way, we recommend cutting it about two inches longer than the actual border size, just to account for any pulling that you've got. You've cut your batting, you've chosen the file size that works best with your hoop length, let's go ahead and get started. One more thing to note, to provide extra structure to the fabric and reduce puckering, we recommend using Kimberbell's fusible backing. This will be used in addition to the required stabilizer. As you'll notice on pages five and six of your instructions, the first section says first hooping, followed by page six, which is titled additional hoopings. So let's go ahead and get started with that first hooping. First, I want you to go ahead and hoop Kimberbell's light mesh cutaway stabilizer only in your chosen hoop size. Next, stitch the batting placement line. Next, place Kimberbell project batting completely covering the placement line. Stitch the batting tack down line. Go ahead and trim the batting close to the Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I let that run a little bit longer than normal because I couldn't figure out how to stop it. Simple as that. I figured it out and I'm going to just tell you that if you're interested in doing this, I do continue the process of showing you step by step. So what I want you to do is actually go to the website um, where, I, where we first were and it was all echoing, sorry about that technology, um, but go to products and then go to where it says new background quilting block by block borders. And there you're going to see why uh, they're different. You're going to see all the designs that are going to be available here in the next few weeks. There's one that's actually available today that you can start with, but then also what, oh, it looks like they're putting some links in the comments. Thank you so much, Kimber Bell people um, for doing that. Um, but then you're going to just scroll down. And if you're interested in doing these brand new block by block borders, um, please, um, please watch the rest of that video. I don't want to, I don't want to, I wouldn't say bore you, <laughs> but they're not boring. They're interesting and they're informative and they're educational, right? But um, I want it, oh, I only want you to have to watch it if you you know, want to try out these borders, right? So let me actually show you a few examples of the difference between like our other borders, which you're gonna find on a dark gray fabric. You've seen these ones before, right? Um, here's a fun wintry one and you can see, you know, it ends with a swirl and so nothing ever, you know, needs to line up, uh, you know, and connect. They're just, they, the way that they're digitized, it makes it so that you really don't see where one stop, place stops and one place ends. It just all is an all over design. And those are the borders that you're gonna find um, that work with both block by block and clear blue tiles, okay? So if it's on a dark gray fabric like this, it's gonna work with both methods. But with our new background, um borders block by block borders like i said in the video these are more of a like a linear design a geometric design and these are things that like will will connect with the awesome way that our digitizers have figured out how to do this and it's it will look continuous just like you would um see uh you know if you took it to a long arm quilter okay so for here's a couple of examples um this one's going to be available in a few weeks as well but you've got these loops right but then how it's digitized and how i show you in the video because it's 
it's, I only showed you a portion of that video. It's a little bit longer and it's so, so easy. Um, it's going to connect all of it. These are just our sample stitch outs that our testers do, but it will connect from one loop to the next and you don't see any kind of break uh, between them. So this is the design right now that's available as of today. And isn't that a great universal design that can be used on anything and people have been asking like gosh we would we love like the all over look of these borders the more whimsical look but you're also looking for ones that um are more geometric um in style maybe they're just more universal because they can use for any time of the year on any project um i will show you Here's a little sneak peek of something. Um, you know that we've got a new quilt coming out called um, Oh So Delightful. And the inner border of it, it it's not out there yet. There's, there's a few images um, swirling around, but the actual quilt is gonna be debuted at the end of this month um, at Quilt Market. But one of the things that's part of it is the inner border is a ruler. And so you're going to use this new block by block border method to make a continuous ruler in the inner border, which is really kind of cool. And then look at that outer border. Oh, so fun, so happy, pretty cool, right? So anyway, that's coming up. Another thing, that, another way we used these borders is something that I'm actually gonna be talking about on next What's New Wednesday. And that is going to be um, Kimberbell Cuties. I know a lot of shops out there are starting to pre-sell Kimberbell Cuties, which is volume two, January through June. I'm not going to show you all the designs today. That's going to be saved for next week and all the, the, the excitement will be next week. But I did want to show you one of them. And that is because it uses the new block by block border method. And so this is the February version. Look at those candied hearts. How fun is that? Look at that with the vinyl. Oh my gosh, the little conversation hearts. We're actually going to be providing um, background quilting for the triangles here. And then you see them in the inner border here, the all over design. And here's an example of what the new block by block border method um, can do. You see it's all these X's. How cute is that uh, around there? Look, we even have new bitty blocks that are going to be available. Oh, there's so much coming out. I can't wait for you to see all of it. But yeah, there is some fun stuff. you got to see. Oh my gosh. Do you see the little arrows and hearts going all over the place on here? It's just going to be a really fun product. A lot of shops out there I know are planning like clubs and classes and, and stuff to do these, these monthly table toppers. But this is an example of why you would want to look at the designs for the block by block border method. Because they're different, they don't they don't work with clear blue tiles. This is just the block by block method. Um, you're going to find those on a light gray fabric. Okay, so the dark gray, remember, that is perfect for block by block or clear blue tiles. Where And that's just kind of more of an all over design look. Whereas this, you're lining up these designs so it looks continuous. Well, it, it will be continuous. Um, and no matter what size of hoop you have, you can do these, um, which is cool. But this new method, um, and it's very similar to the other one. So you're not going to be surprised by the method, but it's how it's digitized um, more than anything is going to allow you to um, have continuous borders, which is kind of cool, right? So check that out. It's a new category. I think right now the website shows maybe five or six designs that are, are coming up with it. Only click on the one that's now available. The other ones, if you click on it, it's just going to say coming soon. And the one that's available today looks like this. All right. And boy, that um, that braid is going to, you can use it for anything, as you know. 
So there you go. What do you think? Are you excited? All right. So um, let's see. Yeah, Kim says she noticed the cutie in the video. Yeah, um, the, the, the video will show even more of those cuties. We use the method there. Um, people people have been asking for this. And so, you know, our digital editor said, why not? Let's make this happen. Let's make this work. That's just pretty awesome. Okay. What weight and type of thread do you use for the background quilting? Um, Diane, that's a great question. Um, I just use regular weight embroidery thread um i'm trying to think what off the top of my head is it 80 weight I'm trying to think what mine is but um and then depending on your bobbin thread like what type of machine you have um you're either using a 60 weight or a 90 weight thread um i believe if it's a i know for the brand uh this could change brand by brand, but I know for me, if I had a embroidery machine sewing combo machine, then I would use a 60 weight thread. If I had just an embroidery only uh, machine, I would use a 90 weight thread. So it really just find out from your you know local dealer um, where you bought your machine, what thread um, they suggest, or of course, just um, looking looking in your manual too, I guess would help, but, um, yeah, find out. It's just like normal. My personal preference is in the bobbin. I use the way to thread it's supposed to, but I, I machine wind my bobbin. I don't use pre-wound bobbins when I do my quilting. So I think you get a better look, um, by using that the the, the pre-wounds are almost wound too tight and i think it causes some tension issues but again that's just my experience you'll know from you know uh testing it out and talking to your dealer what's going to work best for yours okay but yeah um regular whatever you normally use for uh for quilting use that same weight of thread on top and on bottom all right all right Mare says, I want to try the table toppers. Oh, yes, you're going to have so much fun with those. Um, and, you know, you're learning new things. You're piecing in the hoop. You're quilting. You're applicating. You're, you know, putting your binding on. It's just, it's just fun. It's just really fun. And sometimes so when we feel like we're getting overwhelmed. Um, oh, Joy, my friend, real quick, I want to say this. She says, the top thread from Glide by Habitash is 40 weight. Okay, that. I couldn't remember off the top of my head, but thank you, Joy, for, for helping with that info. Um, and which is probably what the other brands are too, is probably 40 weight on top. So I apologize that, that I got that wrong. Um, anyway, th these are these are projects that are gonna teach you new techniques. And sometimes, as I, was, as I was saying, sometimes we go, gosh, a big project, that is so fun. And it's such an accomplishment to get that done. And then, when as soon as it's done you're like okay i can take a breather and i want just a small little project and the camberbell cuties are just perfect for that so um again we'll talk about it all in detail a little bit later lynn says love that this, this takes us to a happy place to be creating makes my heart smile that's awesome thank you for sharing that lynn hey lynn I know you in particular have been looking for autumn borders and I have good news for you, my friend. They are going to be available next week, next week. Try <laughs> hopefully, right? <laughs> I'm saying that now, but I'm pretty 99% certain it's going to be available next week. So there you go. All right. Thanks everyone for joining me today to enter a giveaway. Four people are going to, bleh, are going to win a $50 five zero five zero fifty dollar gift card to use in background quilting designs okay four people are gonna win so all you have to do is tell me in the comments on youtube on facebook or on instagram um where you would like to use um background kimberbell's background quilting designs what's your next project that you're looking to use kimberbell's background quilting designs on and four people are going to win a $50 gift card to purchase any background quilting designs you wish. So there you have it. Melinda, you're so cute. She says, me, me, me. 
<laughs> yeah, who wouldn't want that, right? So there you go. Four people out there are going to win. Um, you have between now and tomorrow night at midnight to post your comment in at on this thread at Kim um, under this video or on YouTube or on Instagram. And let us know what is your next project you want to use Kimberbell's background quilting files on. Let me know in the comments and you might be a winner. We will, of course, post the winners this Friday morning um, on our Facebook page. All right, everyone. Any other questions before I log off? Hey, don't forget to watch the 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 pie so along that we did last Friday. <laughs> I think you'll get a kick out of it. And don't forget to make your cute little pie pin cushion with your other pie blocks from Sweet as Pie. All right. Okay. Let's see. What else? What are you guys saying? Let's see. Candace is definitely on the new cutie table toppers. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're going to love that you can finish these all from start to A to Z, all on your embroidery machine. Just awesome, right? Okay, Autumn says, I just finished some Halloween table runners and used background quilting on them. Yes. So happy to hear that, Autumn. That's exactly what we love. You guys are getting these things done, taking them to the finish line, and that is an awesome feeling, isn't it? Jackie says, on her grandson's quilt. Awesome. Jackie, when you do that, please post a picture. We can't wait, wait to see it. All right. Okay. Cynthia says, I'm looking forward to the autumn borders because I would like to use it for my Twilight Boulevard pillow that she's working on. She's also signed up for the cuties. Yay. Yeah. Lots. If you're, if you don't know who's doing cuties, make sure and ask your shop. Hey, have you heard about Kimberbell cuties? They all should have the information, but you never know. Um, maybe they're new to Kimberbell. So find out from them and tell them you would love to be to support them with the brand new Kimberbell quilties. Kimberbell cuties. We'll talk about it all next week, including seeing all the darling designs for the first six months. All right. Thanks for joining me to, today, everyone. Have a wonderful day and keep on stitching. Bye-bye.